Well, thank you, Joseph, for that package. And now, uh, joining us in the studio uh, to do justice to uh, this topic, Ambassador Isaac Ude. Ambassador Isaac Ude is the national chairman of the National Rescue Movement, NRM. Uh, thank you, Isaac, for coming this morning. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, we also have Chief Ralph Okemosu. Uh, Chief Ralph Okemosu is the national chairman, African Dem Democratic Congress. It's good to have you join us. Good morning, Nigerians. All right. Uh, but two other guests who are with us this morning for the conversation. Uh, one, uh, Aliu Audu, who is leader APC Rebirth. Uh, Ali Aldo, we're glad to have you on Good Morning Nigeria. Thank you, Nigeria. Now, uh, also joining us uh, for this conversation, Honorable Adamu uh, Mohammed, uh, is a former uh, majority leader of the Kogi State House of Assembly and also a legal practitioner. Honorable Mohammed, we're glad to have you this morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Good morning, Nigeria. Now, let, let's let's begin this conversation with uh, uh, Chief uh, Raf Okeo also. We're beginning the conversation with you. Uh, I, uh, Nigerians uh, obviously would wonder uh, at what point in time can we have peace in the political parties? Before primaries, there are squabbles. After primaries, there are squabbles. To get the leadership to run the political parties, there are squabbles. When you're having congresses and conventions, there are squabbles. And now we're just a fortnight to the formal flag off of campaigns for the 2023 elections. You have a squabbles every year. You know, that, that, my, my colleague Kiran and I were discussing a political party, and I believe that's yours, uh, suspended its uh, presidential candidate. Another said, no, you know, anti party activities, uh, XYZ. Just, it's, these are just conflicting signals uh, to observers. What is happening? Thank you very much. You know, <laughs> building is tough. Well, and imagine a political party like ours. We live in a culture, the bigger Nigerian culture, the ecosystem in the country. We have challenges. The, the, uh, and the challenges you see in the bigger society is also the same thing that you will see in the political parties, just like you go to the corporate organizations. I can tell you, if you check the statistics, not up to 10% of the corporations that get registered in the country in a year survive. And within, the, within five years, not up to 5% uh, get up to become major corporations. So what is happening in the political, political parties is not in any way. It's just that people have not done their studies. So if you go to the Corporate Affairs Commission on daily, on daily basis, you see young men, young women going there to register corporations. They get registered. But how many? If you check the number of organizations that are registered, you may see 10 million organizations registered in Nigeria. But how many are truly functioning? Uh, having said that, in the political parties, you discover that uh, in the political parties, you discover that, especially for the emerging political parties, the emerging political parties, the, the membership are always new. When it comes to an election year, you see that almost everybody who wants to contest the election may have left either PDP or APC or any of the uh, other parties. They, they, they leave the parties, they come into these emerging parties to contest election. And when they come in, no matter the DNA, you, you, the values you try to create within your party, they come with these external influences. And then before you know it, the trouble will start. It, 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 uh, but the, the, uh, the way we see it, as a matter of fact, we said after our current event, we're going to commission a serious study because it took us almost four years trying to brand a new party. And all of a sudden, we see ourselves where we are. But a serious study has, has to be done. A study the, on what? A study on political leadership and the 
emerging scenarios in Nigerian uh, politics. Because when you cross carpet uh, the way you do, and you get into 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 an emerging political party, you you, you come up with all all, uh, all kinds of things, and when we get to understand this, it becomes easier to manage, to lead, and to uh, move forward. Well, okay, from all indications, all is not well with your party, as the case may be, and uh, your preparations for the 2023 election uh, is uh, highly threatened. And uh, again, the question my colleague, you know, you know, you know put to you uh, has a lot to do with uh, the inability of the Nigerian political class to organize themselves. One, they are insatiable. Two, they are venomous in terms of what they would say, their utterances and, and all of that. You're talking about the emerging political party. We've had parties that have existed for, for 10, 20 years and so on. Yet, they are still going through wranglings. What are they going to learn? You say you're going to carry out a study. Study of what? Study of human relations in a political environment. Sorry, I will come back to you. I'm just uh, uh, trying to paint a scenario no, for me to bring in for me to bring in another guest. We're going to come back oh, to okay. you. You have to, you have time to you know illustrate or whatever uh, do for the explanations of what you have said. You. All right, and I want to bring you in, Honorable uh, Madu uh, Muhammad, who have uh, passed through the rigors, you know, of uh, being nominated and elected, and uh, eventually a one-time majority leader in the Kugi House of Assembly. So we must have passed through all those. Uh, you know, uh, challenges in, in the process of uh, uh, political uh, parties. So what we're saying is that it has become so consistent that in Nigeria, parties do not have internal <coughs> democracy. The wranglings are increasing by the day, even close to electioneering, and we're still experiencing it. So that is the reason why we brought in this topic as part of our conversation today. So, um, Honorable Adamu Mohammed. What's your take on these wranglings, on ending wranglings in parties, not just one? Thank you so very much. You see, the major problem we have in the Nigerian political system is that most of our political parties do not have ideology. People don't really put themselves together for the purpose of acquiring political power. And wherever if somebody or people are fighting for power, they are scrambling. They are scrambling because power is not given, power is taken. I, I, I became a member of a PDP at the point of formation. I contested the election 1998 for the chairmanship of my local The experience I had in 1998 has not changed. It has not changed. Uh, the the so-called political leadership are personalizing the party. You, they say you are the leader, you must produce who will be Councillor from the local from the ward, chairman from the local government, house of assembly from the local government, house of one singular person who sit down in the comfort zone of his bedroom to do this. And naturally it will result in crisis. Most of the political crisis in Nigeria are you know majorly noticed during the election. People are scrambling for power and they forget about rules and regulation. In most cases, there are no serious rule and regulation. It is the, the rule of the leader that is the regulation, the, the regulation. Putting abeyance the constitution of the party, even the constitution of Nigeria in some cases, because of the desperation to acquire this political power, failing to realize the basic fact that this power ultimately belongs to God Almighty. During the election, most of the politicians forget about God. Because they do everything to acquire power. The crisis that is going on in most of the political parties is as a result of that. They refuse to respect the will of God. If I, if I go back on the memory lane, the 1998 that I contested the election, I was a star boy. Everybody was saying, you, you, a young man. Like, I didn't have money. I was practicing in Abuja. I didn't have money. But they say, you can do it for us. They say, I didn't, uh, I mean, uh, the, 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 the people contributed money for me. But when I went through for the primary election, there was no primary election. The man, man mountain, the leader, the leadership of the party are told. They say, we will not give you a ticket because we are not married. I took it calm because I, I believe so much in God. Whatever it takes for you must come to pass. I took it calm. The day they conducted the local government election, that was when I married. 
at the end of the day, the advantage in my being calm is that I have about two, uh, two grown-up children that are graduate now. And it served me better than winning that election. What people that even won that election lost. They lost it. When I when I contested for House of Assembly 2003, I won. I contested 2007, I won. I became a majority leader of the, of, 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 of the city assembly. It was better for me than being the, in the cargo chairman at that material time. But I did not know. It was my faith that led me. People that bring people that bring in their faith into this scrabble for political party are the beneficiary at the end of the day. But unfortunately, a lot of us do not let we believe in our money because our political system has been heavily monetized. If you don't have money, you cannot contest election. And that is why we have lost our place in our political system. The best candidates do not have money. They don't even want to soil their hands. And that is why we are where we are. The few that have money, they don't have principle. They don't have the intellectual capacity to even uh, deliver. Okay. Honorable uh, Adamu uh, Muhammad, thank you very much uh, for the uh, points that you have raised. Yeah. Uh, it's curious that uh, <laughs> okay. an aspirant is told that uh, he won't be tapped for the election. Because he's done my... Because he's single. That's discriminatory. And as he said, yes. uh, that runs against the provisions of the Constitution. Uh, so I, I, I'm happy that you didn't then immediately arrange a marriage for yourself uh, to also be eligible to <laughs> so to be eligible to contest. So you then married at your own time, and then other things uh, follow. Thanks, uh, Alio Audu, uh, leader of APC Rebirth. Some of the wranglings, some will say, speak to again the this phrase is a tired phrase now lack of internal party democracy. But it would appear that virtually everything is traceable uh, to that. And uh, sometimes you also have sore losers, also bad losers. Uh, but they will say, look, if there's a level playing field, I won't be a bad loser in, in, in the first instance. What is wrong with political parties? Is it, is it just a Nigerian thing or what? Or shall we say it's a generational thing? Not a Nigerian thing, it's just a generational uh, malaise that we are contending with. Thank you. Um, I think partly it's um, a Nigerian thing, it's a human thing, a Nigerian thing and a generational thing. And um, like um, Honorable rightly said, but I, I, do, I do not think entirely, it is entirely up to the leaders. I equally think it's um, the responsibility of the followers to of party members, just like um, our larger, larger society. We have left so much you know, to the leaders that um, we, we have failed to be good citizens. And among the citizens, leaders will always be picked or leaders emerge. And you can't learn new things when you become a leader. It's about what you have been majorly used to. We live in a society where merit, values have all been, you know, um, neglected for man no man or for instant gratification. Ideology, a party, I don't think any political party in the world is, is formed with an ideology. It won't be an ideology if it is formed with it. You know, a political party, which is usually as the party, it's a combination of different people coming together, first in first, to achieve a particular purpose. As they move, as they progress, internal engineering will lead them into identifying what values they want to be identified with. They want to, I mean, what ideology they intend to build. So for 23 years of democracy, I mean, uninterrupted democracy, it's not really too long a time where we consider the best of democracies in the world. Have, you know, like the Americas has gone over more than two and a half centuries. It's not so long a time to, to be hard on ourselves, on, 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 on politicians, especially the leaders. But it's equally long enough a time for the average Nigerian, a well well meaning Nigerian, to step up, who are party members, to ask questions. That was exactly what we did with the APC Rebirth Movement as far back as 2020, when the interim um, leadership of the party at the time seemed to be heading in a direction different from what the party, you know, what we joined the party for. You know, I mean, we 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 we're very passionate about the country. We bothered about the way we're being governed. 
and we realize over a period of time that if we don't get involved, it's never going to change. Getting involved isn't just waiting until you're elected. Getting involved is asking your leaders questions. Nobody owns one party over the other. We are all equal members of the party. So we took it up and we, we challenged them until the convention happened the way it ought to happen, until another convention that produced a presidential candidate happened. Maybe, like you rightly said, it's a general thing, but part of what puts you in a position to be responsible, in position to show that you are ready for the responsibility of governing the country is how you organize yourself in marriages, in homes, even siblings, there will always be disagreement. But the most important thing is if the set regulation, if the rules governing any organization, any association, any party is respected by the members, you know, we, we, we have party members who do not want to obey even their own constitution. That is usually it. Then greed comes in. If we agree that the constitution is supreme, it, mean, it simply means that everyone, irrespective of your role or your, of your position in the party, will abide by the rules. If we all agree to do this, which means we do not have to win all the time. We can't all win all the time. But it means that it is never one man win and the rest are forgotten. You know, the moment we realize it's one for all and all for one, then we learn to respect the rules, then we learn to respect one another, then we learn to fight and live another day. I think it is the absence of this simple respect or regard for rule and laws, which is, I mean, everywhere in our society. It's not just in political parties. It's what's dragging most parties to, to, to the sort of wranglings we have just this close to general election. Yeah, well, Kira, I, I mean, Kira, he, Kira, he, I'm he, sorry. He, let, me, let him explain something. I would like him rather to explain something. You talk about the APC rebirth movement and the influence it had in re-engineering the national leadership of the party. Yes, sir. Honorable Adamu Muhammad has drawn attention to what happens at the sub-national level. At the national level, you can make a lot of noise and then you get attention. And you have prescribed what party members need to do. Why is it that party members are not taking on these steps of rebirth from the world level to the council level to the state level, where you have leader, everybody, leader, leader, leader. Why? Okay, now it is, it is because of, um, yet again, the central system of, of governance that we operate, which is, um, I mean, it's transferred to political parties and most organizations. Most decisions are taken from the top. And the moment they are taken in Abuja here, they just pass it down to the um, remote areas, especially for parties who have, you know, presence in all of the areas. What, what started us was as, actually as a result of um, crisis from the world level. You know, it was after the World Congress that we did and the local government Congress. And we realized that there was a repetition of wranglings. Across. We took our survey. We, I mean, we had polls within us. So we called party members from the different local governments of the country and realized that we all have the same complaints. You know, you sit in Abuja and you send people to... Kafancha, to Kogi, to Sokoto, to Benue, to Inugu, to Imo, to carry out Congress with a predetermined, you know, um, expectation of results. So what happens is when they get there, they don't succeed without the, without the, without the, either the co collaboration of people on ground. When these people on ground, stand up, resist such, there's usually a channel through which most of this comes back to the people at the top. I happen to be a member of the appeal committee at the World and Local Government Congress level. You know, so when I sat in that committee and I heard party members, you know, coming all the way to the center to complain about what has happened, you know, and I am aware that there were certain instructions which ran contrary to the expected result of average man. So that's, that's, that's basically at every level, the membership and leadership of the political party must take responsibility for what happened to them. Okay, okay, thank you. You know, you, you, I was interested in your, 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 your APC rebirth, you know, initially before we, we, we opened the set for all this conversation, you know, actually, so look, how efficacious or how effective has this rebirth been? I'm not, I'm not going to come to you, but I just want to like, you know, paint a scenario from what you have just told Nigerians, right? So it does appear that uh, whatever thing that you have done since 2020, 
that you enter into this rebirth and it was never effective because the APC the party never had a chairman for, for nearly two years. We have wranglings, you know, nominated a governor who left his seat of power and came to Abuja and spent almost a year running the party for you and nobody cares what happened to the state and how it was governed that period. After a while, of course, before that, you lost your chairman on two occasions and all of that. So these are, I mean, these are wranglings, uh, you know. And uh, I mean, it will naturally trickle down, you know, to the grassroots, you know, to the world level and what have you. We are talking about wranglings, people not believing in any ideology, people not accepting defeat, people, you know, raising some concerns that should have been personal more than political. So let's bring in Uday here, uh, please. You know, uh, we've kept here for, for, for a while, yeah. but it's also an, an advantage of listening to other guests. So, all right. So yeah. let's get your own view uh, of uh, all these uh, wranglings uh, of uh, political innuendo and troubles. I saw false innuendo because you, you, you are well seeing that. You know, we're not talking about specifics now yet. No, no, no. It's not innuendo. Uh, yeah, but we, it, it, I, I know, those, I, are, those are direct instances. I, you know, of, uh, you know of open disagreement exactly yes. open okay. but if you listen to the alternatives of course you understand that we are moving towards that level okay and there is a lacuna <laughs> yeah thank you very much well um my colleagues here have uh, said a lot about the wranglings in most cases it is always as a result of um bringing in people at the middle of the game. Most political parties, if you discover the contestants, mostly are not the members of the party that started with the party that knows the rules and regulations guiding that particular party they intend to, con to use their platform to run for a particular position in election. So when they come in, some of them are desperate. Some of them comes to get this ticket for business. So why admit them in the party in the first instance? Pardon? Why admit them into the party in the first instance? Well... If this is their profile, if this is their mindset, well, why you bring them to come and pollute the waters? You don't, you don't bring them, they come. They're bringing the money. They don't they don't force themselves on you. Yes. So so why do you admit them? No, we admit if you know that they are potentially troublesome, that they could we, we don't know whether they they have been troublesome or not. They come. When you see somebody who wants to serve the state through the assembly or as a governor or want to serve the nation as a presidential candidate, you don't know what kind of uh, characters he had already. All you have to do is, when he comes in, he will get involved. And when he gets involved, he will now bring out his character. And then now let's, for the party to know how to manage him. And that is, on the person of that trying to see how you make them understand this is this is that the party is supreme to any candidate. But some of them think that because they come in, they bring money to buy ticket, to buy the nomination form that uh, and they win the primaries or the 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 the, 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 the above the party. And most of them does not study the constitution of the party. And when that is happening, you see the wranglings in the party. It's just like when you assemble players who are not blended for one year or six months, you send them for a match, a particular match. They won't play like a team that has been there for one year consecutively. They won't give you that result you need. That is it. Yeah, it, it, it 
Sorry, can I, can I, can I, can I, you know, uh, the same thing that is happening in your imagined party is also happening even in uh, the parties that have been in power for, 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 for 20 years and so on. So, it's, uh, if we go to, to PDP, for instance, you see the same, uh, uh, you know, scrapbook going on. Exactly. If you go to a, a, APC, it's, it's also happening. Exactly. The, the dynamics is clear. You see, um, about 50 years ago, the Boy Scout began to train leaders. That thing you see the Boy Scout do is critical. When our young men and women, sorry, our young boys and girls, they join Boy Scout and Girls Guard, and this leadership skill begin to build. Our democracy is just evolving. We have challenges. Social media age, everything. The Boy Scout is almost dying, and all these all, all this, uh, leadership grooming organizations and so dying. So the truth is that the leadership in, in place now has to think about the future. Young people, a, a political parties like ours, will even start to build people from the grassroots. Young people, not necessarily that you, you, you have to become a politician or no, but leadership training is critical. It will help us <clears throat> moving forward. Yeah. It doesn't only affect the political parties, it affects our businesses, it affects our institutions, and so on. It affects the governance system everywhere. That's fine. That's, that's, that's a good suggestion. But I was also going to ask this question. Is the whole idea of the convenience of political parties as SPVs, that is to say special purpose vehicles, partly responsible for this. I mean, Honorable Isaac Uday talks about somebody comes into the party, uh, he wants to contest. <laughs> you, you come into a party and the first thing you want to do is to contest. Why will you admit me? And of course you are eager to issue a membership card to me. Uh, you don't know who I am, you have not, uh, and then after a while, as he says, you begin to show your color. Uh, if you then kick him out or he's not able to realize his goal there, he comes to a uh, okay, Wosu's party, and if he doesn't, then he goes to Adamo uh, Mohammed's party. If he doesn't, then he goes to APC Rebirth. Well, is this the whole idea of the fluidity of membership of political parties responsible for the kind of squabbles? Are there what, what? How do we understand these squabbles? Are there are, are there persons who are fighting for the soul of the party to say, look, this is the right way to go? And then there are others who are saying, what do you mean? No, I mean, this is what we want. This is a new order I want to create, and so on and so forth. You, you, you can say, you, you got it 100%. You can say that 100%. Let me tell you, uh, in our political party, for instance, unfortunately, the imagined parties, you need people who may have capacity to run the election because you want to start winning elections. In our political party, for instance, we had some bright young people who we lobbied to come in, into the party. And then the delegates, 2,000 and something delegates, saw as, as somebody who, who, who went around the country to them, we have capacity. If ADC is interested in winning the presidency, we have capacity. You know, my, me and my group, we have capacity. We are going to take ADC to, uh, 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 to the villa. And we were excited. We're excited. We want to get, get to the villa with that capacity. And then our delegates, 45% of our delegates voted in uh, this, uh, uh, this guy since June 8th. And between June 8th to now, no campaign office, no, uh, no poster, no manifesto, no nothing. Our leadership failed. And with, 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 when I said we're going to do uh, uh, some studies moving forward, and also the, 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 the electoral law will tie your hands. Because when we come to a screening, they say you can't screen anybody out based on anything. Anybody that uh, puts their head, they, they want to run, then you know, they're entitled to, 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 uh, to run. So the electoral law, we want to tie almost the, 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 uh, the hands of the party from identifying the, uh, themselves as this is uh, what the party stands by. Mm -hmm. And when such person who had promised the delegates that they have capacity, they want to come and run, all of a sudden they, 
grab the ticket and stampede your party to motionlessness. You know how frustrating it can be? Okay, thank you. Uh, let's uh, bring in um, Ole Mohammed one more time here. And uh, my concern now is on uh, uh, the funding of political parties. Uh, is it part of the issues uh, that come up when a, a leader will determine who becomes a councillor, uh, local government chairman, uh, House of Assembly rep, House of Reps, you know, uh, Senate, and, uh, and what have you? Because uh, no party can uh, be functional without being properly funded. And uh, from what I've known or learned over the years is that all these parties since 1999 are mutually being funded by individuals. And when I put my money on the line, you don't expect I Illicit me. state funds. Well, you know, my, well, yes, that's correct. But then somebody is willing to bring it in, you know, and say, look, uh, this party, we need to organize the rallies here and there. We need to have offices here and there. And all of that, we need to pay our staff, you know. And in, in our party membership system, members don't contribute any money. So some individuals who are well to do, so okay, fine and good. This party must run. I'll bring in my money. And after that, I will determine who gets where, what, when, and how, which is the simplest form of uh, definition of politics. You know, by the time I determine how the party is run, using my money and my my financial muscle or resources, right? How do I now share equally with you, who is also a member, who is not contributing any money, you know, to the party? You told us a story to say you are participating in Abuja. Your people called you and say you can deliver. You you return. You know, to to the uh, to your hinterland, and discover that uh, they're not willing. You know, the, the party, the powers that be, were not willing to give you, give you the ticket. Perhaps, perhaps because people have been running the party before you returned. I you know I never contributed to the party at the grassroots, and they want to come and take up, you know, a, 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 a position. So, how does this affect, you know, or or how does it promote wranglings in parties? The inability of party members to contribute. And of course, uh, uh, giving room for persons uh, with the resources to take over the parties. You see, our problem is not limited to funding of the party. It's part of it. You, you, uh, you are saying that uh, the leadership of the money are bringing in illicit money, money stolen from the government is very, very correct. Exactly. It's, it's even more than that now. Do you know that? The ritualists have taken over our, our, our political system in Nigeria. Young boys will go out to look for money anyhow. Because what they need is money. They go about doing in, committing heinous crime to get money for the purpose of contesting. And the, the unfortunate thing is that even the people at home, the, the member of the parties, or people moving about freely in the, in, in the villages, the emphasis is largely money. They will not even bother how you got this money. Somebody that was, was a driver in the village about three years ago suddenly became a multimillionaire and is the darling of the society. It is, it, our problem in a political party in Nigeria even goes beyond the uh, political party. It's a societal problem. You see, the country with Nigeria is going into a state of anomaly. Things are not working the way they're supposed to work. And some people would argue that the political behavior is partly an aid to the lawlessness and anarchy that you're talking you. about. And so we are saying, how do we correct this? I, and that is it. You see, if you, if you are talking about how to correct it, if you go, if you go back to our political history, during the general Ibrahim uh, Babangida, there was this... Uh, approach he gave to our political development in this country that a lot of people did not really appreciate. We are operating two political parties, SDP and NRC. There were some degree of sanity, apart from the intervention of the government, there was some degree of sanity in our political system. I was, I was, I was a war secretary that time. I was NRC war secretary in my place in the, at that time. There were, you know, people were contributing. The government got the party secretariat for all the local government in the country. So the issue of Mr. Big Man, the leader, getting the party office for you will not really arise. If it is possible to limit the number of our political party, it will help solve the problem. And at the same time, 
if you can take the pain of you know following our the party constitution to solve our problem my my colleague was telling us that people will just jump into the party to contest there is a rule i've not read the constitution, the constitution of your party there must be a rule that says that you must be a member of the party for a, a period before you can contest election why did you give him the wafer you can't get the wafer why did you give him because he felt that he has the capacity, the, the capacity they are talking about the mostly is money. The resources that you require to you know. You want to know how he got this money. He, 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 he if, you follow, if you follow our constitution seriously, on a very serious look, it will reduce some of these problems. You, let, let me give you a practical example that what happened recently. We have, we have, political, we have a political structure in, the, in, in, the, in my place. Look, I mean, I have a local, a word ESCO. We have local government ESCO. When you are doing a world congress, it is the responsibility of the world ESCO to manage it. But the power, the power that be, who now sit down in the house, no congress. They write, they will write a report, or they will do the, the world will do the congress. They will change the results, and the world will not have the capacity to say, to do any do much about it. If you follow our constitution. It will reduce the problem. The world ESCO, as low as they are, they have power. Allow them to, you know, to do their work. No, but the question that arises is, uh, uh, Barrister uh, Adamo, the point you are raising are valid, but they are describing the rot in the system. If the ESCO at the world level is incapacitated from functioning, for instance, in terms of organizing legitimate Congresses. And a so-called power that be seeks to impose his will on the free will of the ESCO. The question would be, what is the recourse of that ESCO? That's why the APC Rebirth guy, I want to bring it, sorry, uh, APC Rebirth uh, uh, movement member, I want to bring you in again. What is the recourse? Do people just fold their hands and say, okay, I mean, the powers that be have said it, they have, over, they have overruled us, uh, so let us just ride with them? Well, um, I think it starts, it, it starts from... Can you not have a rebellion at the world level? Yes. Yes, we, we sure can. You know, it's, it's, we live in a society where it's almost um, seen as abnormal fighting for what is right or mm -hmm. trying to ensure that the right thing is done. You know, you have a lot of people reaching out to you who say, oh, be careful. Oh, you will not get this favor. Oh, you will not get this. Right. Oh, you will not be... I mean, what do we live for if we don't live right? That's the first question we ask ourselves. I don't know about... I mean, I think as a Nigerian, as a young Nigerian, I'm disappointed at the generations above us. That's why my, my, myself and my contemporaries have taken it upon, of, upon ourselves to challenge your generations. You know, it is, it is that... I mean, I'm a millennial. You know, I mean, I've, I've lived for about 40 years now and, and haven't seen any good governance. I went to public school, yes. I can't hand over what I've seen to my children. That's mm -hmm. why we are fighting. But the first question is, how do people get to the position they occupy? People sit in their house. You, it's not just the small parties. I mean, I look at the small parties and I say this. In every fraudulent case, there is either a gullible victim or a desperate victim. You know, who, who, who seem to want much more than he or she deserves. You have a small party. Someone comes in and says, oh, I want to take you to the villa. How? You must not know how politics work. You must not know how the, how the country is to think an individual for a party who has not won the local government chairmanship election, ward councillor, no House of Assembly member, that an individual will take you to the villa. How? We have over 8,000 words, political words in the country. No, just, just a minute. About 100 and, um, 170 something thousand political, uh, what's it called, polling units right now. Beyond resources, you need man and woman to man these places. You need structure. Money is important, but how willing, how determined, how involved in the political activities are the members that are coming in? You've talked about um, qualification for running for. There is no problem with coming into a party I want to run. That's absolutely fine. If at that point, you, 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 you evaluate every other aspirant and find out that this is most, this, despite just coming in, this is the most qualified and decide to give him a waiver on those values that you have set for your parties. But in the case where the only thing you look at, I mean, an individual 
who has a little money wakes up and go before he gets to the chairman's house. He has sent him a, 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 a Toyota Corolla, a Toyota Camry. Then he has sent some two, two million into his account. Then he has sent something. The chairman needs that to, to take care of some personal pressing issues. Then the man comes tomorrow and you are wondering how he become God. You let him become God. Because the moment he came in, you allow him to do because he has taken care of you, he has kept your mouth shut. A lot of times, people, things go wrong, and people step up and ask questions. Then the next thing you want to hear is, people call you from back. I either want to threaten you or bribe you to keep quiet. It now depends on what you decide to do. So, which is why... How do, how do we... How do... If I say we, I mean, I'm, so, I'm not... As a society, I'm, yeah. I'm not, no, I'm not... As a society, that's fine. But let's particularize the Kirian. Because the kind of corruption that goes on at the private level such as wooing a party chairman or wooing a party leader to compromise the individual. How can those who are in that position resist such temptations knowing that one, this is a poison chalice? You take it, at the end of the day, you are not able to speak, you are not able to exercise your free will to manage or govern that political party. Exactly, and, and to add to that, before we bring in, you are going to cut your turn, but let's say, yeah, let's say, uh, uh, I guess you are going to come in and talk on all that. You know, to buttress or rather, you know, uh, amplify, uh, amplify what uh, he has just, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, raised. The point is, when you say the leader, what I have learned is that before you become a leader, you must have doled out some money for that party. You must have, when they say, somebody say, I made you a governor. I mean, what, what do you think he was talking, he was talking about? I made well, you a governor. A because I funded your campaign in the first place. Right? If I didn't borrow your money, I donated money for your campaign and huge amount of money. Of course, when you get there, you are going to give me, you know, you know contracts. And if I draw that such money, I will present to you maybe commissioner of finance, commissioner for works and uh, works and all of that. So that's what leaders leaders do in political parties in Nigeria. But what I'm saying, how do we stop all that? How would members of political parties be, become equal owners of the party by making contributions to the party, you know, to to be able to have a right? You don't have a right. When a leader is sponsoring a party and he, he's telling you who is who is going to get what, and he says it's not true. That's what that, that as a matter of fact, by the time he does that money, he's, he's, he's trying to acquire the authoritative capacity to allocate the resources control. And, and control the resources. So, they come in here. You have an emerging party, you know, and of course, you have seen the wranglings going on in other parties that have been established. <laughs> what are you doing to ensure that this does not creep into your party because you are still operating in the same ecosystem? My party is not even uh, uh, free from the same wrangling. We are neat, and uh, that's why I I spoke before from experience I have <clears throat> from the wranglings I've been facing in the party. Going straight to the point, I think the problem become worse when government withdrew from sponsoring political parties. And throw it open to parties. No, to... I'm sorry, Kiri, I'm sorry to interject. I know my colleague's question is on. Oh, let me just throw this in so you take it along. Okay. Because we have had a conversation around this same subject matter. When government, let's throw INEC, was subventing the political parties, people were forming political parties in their boys' quarters. And once they formed it, they hijacked it, and then the funds that they became theirs. Same old story. So please go ahead. Now, government has done their best through INEC by making it mandatory that you must win election to retain your party. And that has reduced the number of political parties to 18 now which may even get down if to less than 18 mm -hmm. after this election. If the parties are allowed with the number of few parties we have now to keep sponsoring themselves, this, this situation of party wranglings will continue because Somebody who comes into the party and uh, took over the sponsorship of that party, one way or the other, may decide to do otherwise, not knowing 
that the party itself is supreme and most uh, most most of them don't even sit down to study the constitution of the party nigerians majority of nigeria doesn't have bring out time to read to study the constitution even even the constitution of whatever they are involved let me say this if we want to minimize this wrangling the Parties should ensure that before you contest for any position, you will spend a certain number of years in the party as a member. Because the problem we're having is this clause of waiver. Waiver in most of the party constitutions is why, if you come even two days to the primaries, you can be given a waiver. And when you come, you bring out your, your, des your desperation. You are still desperate. You want to get... And most of them are not even ready to contest the election. They have to get this ticket and step down and trade with the ticket. And probably the party wants to get to the peak of the election. And press uh, away which has to be donating money from here and there, calling on phone, do this, don't do this, don't do that. And then you'll be having serious problem with the party leadership. So if we want to get to the root of this, to minimize it or eliminate it completely, there should be limited number of periods to be a member of the party, to have before can contest the right before can contest election. <clears throat> well, well, I think that those that kind of provision is already available in the constitution of the parties. But the waiver, but, is yeah, the but clause not, well, yes, that clause. What that is that kind of clause is referred to as a proviso. There is no constitution that you do not have a proviso. If you have uh, a prescription that says X, Y, Z, provided. That, 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 that. And it is the exercise of that discretionary power in that proviso, Kirian. Mm -hmm. That is the issue. Well, I raised the question earlier. Uh, Chief Raf, I know that you are uh, itching to say something. Why, how, how do you win off those who are in charge of political parties, whether called leaders or otherwise, from seeing temptation and falling for it immediately? Somebody wires money into your account, puts uh, a car in, your, in the front of your house and says the day after they're going to send his uh, PA to go to the vehicle registration center so they can give you new number of plates and so on and so forth. How do you resist that kind of temptation? Yes. Knowing that, as I said, it's a poison chalice. Yes. Now, um, the, the APC again uh, uh, had also raised the issue when I talked about some guy who came into ADC and said he had, uh, you know, uh, promised the delegates that he had capacity to take the party to uh, the villa. Number one is that <clears throat> money being wired and so on. <clears throat> and he just described what happens in PDP and APC. It doesn't happen in every party. If you uh, 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 come to my party, you can check the track record. You have men and women who are dedicated to building a new culture for the uh, for, uh, uh, new political culture in Nigeria. Uh, why are new parties in There's no PDP here now to immediately report that. <laughs> okay, I'm, so, I'm yes. sorry. Uh, There's uh, no uh, APC leadership, you know, to also na, report na, that. Uh, uh, you, you see, APC So, anyway, so, uh, because he raised it, and that's why I'm uh, responding to it. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm responding to it. But he didn't name your party. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, he, 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 he raised it based on what my, my, my <laughs> response. <laughs> then, number two, number two, he said, why would a new political party, or a party that has not, not, not been in power, even at local government to any, think of getting into the villa? My dear brother, Nigerians have said they are tired of APC and PDP. You go to every market before this time, they say that. They say that, look at the country where we are, insecurity. You can't move from here to Kanu. You can't even move from here uh, 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 to your home. And you think Nigerians are stupid? They're not. They have said they don't want these two uh, uh, parties in power. 
So it's clear. Nigerians will take any candidate that can show leadership and take them to a new trajectory where we will have decency, where we will be able to build new culture. That's what you, you go to the local market in, in, in your community. You ask them, you hear clearly. No, if you can give us no APC, no PDP, good for us. Therefore, for any political party to imagine that they can respond to what the, the Nigerian people uh, are calling for, is right. Any leadership uh, uh, will do that clearly. I'm not the one who said no APC, no PDP. Then uh, thirdly, the, in the political culture we are building, luckily, about eight years ago, about 11 years ago, we formed this organization called IPAC, Inter-Party um, Adversary Council. Council. We are working hard for them to start working as a real council, where they will be able to monitor the, 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 the politicians and political operatives, and some of the things that work, uh, work <coughs> within the political parties. The leader, there has been a leadership challenge in there, but we, uh, after I left the corporate world, to get in, 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 by the time I part world, will become a real adversary council, dealing with political issues, all of, all of that will be handled. In the issue of uh, this event that we're talking about, you know where I come from, you know, you also have political history of what has been happening since 1999, of how power moved from one uh, one, one individual to the other, and the ranking in question. Even presently, we have learned that you know a governor will sell the seat to the next to the incoming in, incoming governor. And when that thing happens, he, he has already bought the party earlier as as the candidate of the party because of course he has bought the position. You know, so he had to distribute the powers and and what have you. And what are we talking about? Money movement. Uh, just very briefly, uh, uh, honourable, you know, because of your vast experience in. <coughs> In all of this, right? Kiria, why Kiria, you there? I, I know that you want to mm -hmm. ask. Please, let me throw this in because sometimes it speaks to the mentality of uh, of our politicians, particularly this breed in the Fourth Republic. Mm -hmm. What you just said about a governor ensuring that the person he picks as a successor emerges, plus all the other positions that will go with it, they say that they have is that success without a successor equals to failure. You, you haven't heard that? Clear. That is the ideology. I haven't heard that. I'm not even for the person. Okay, success without success a successor. Without a successor. Amounts to failure. Am, equals to. They have the other people say amounts to. They say equals, equals to, to failure. Exactly. So with that, with that if, if you don't have that simple equation, mm -hmm. it drives the kind of desperation that you are seeing. So you must determine your successor. That, that's right. That's it's, it. not, it's like Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein, the little formula that he gave, the little formula that Albert Einstein gave that led to space technology and all mm -hmm. kinds of things that we have seen in science is precisely what we see, particularly at the subnational level, to say success. If you are successful as a governor and you cannot determine your successor, then you have failed. Have, no. oh, have you been a governor before? You have never been. I, I, so, no, I, I, I have no, been a leader at different levels. Okay. No, no, no. Hang oh, on a second. Hang on a second. Yes. We are saying this in the political realm. And a number of us have the experience, not uh, elective positions. We work with politicians. Mm. Honorable Adam. You, you are very, very correct, sir. <laughs> there is no governor in Nigeria to the 36 days. There is no governor that is not working to get his successor. The reasons are multiple. That doesn't make it right. It doesn't. It, it don't know. This is part of the anomaly we are talking mm -hmm. about. Mm. It ought not to be. These are the, sick, the, the sickness of our political system. Mm. Why must you bring your successor? Why? It, it, it's part of corruption. The reasons, one of the reasons is that you want to be protected after you leave office. You track your, your past should be covered. covered. And who will cover it for you? That person that you, you think that is the ideal person. But in most cases, it turned out to be war between them. Because most of them bought this ticket from from the, the from, from the Auga, in court. They bought it. That's what exactly that's what I was and saying. By the time but the problem look at the way it starts. Practically, I'm talking to you out of experience. 
I'm the outgoing governor. I bring you in. I fund the election. I have to dictate the pace for you. How you rule, who will be the commissioner for finance. There are some selected officers. Education works. Exactly. There are some selected officers. And then you protect him from the uh, impeachment uh, threat from the House. Exactly. By also having your lackeys in the House of Assembly. Well, that is serious. Having GC officers. In, in, the, that, in, in the House, you wedge it. In and then in the councils, you also... I don't know. It, it, sometimes it will have... When you see crisis between the new governor and the Assembly, mm. it's an evidence that there is a crack between the outgoing and, and the incumbent. Mm -hmm. Because they will use the instrument of the legislature to, to now deal with the new governor. Uh, gentlemen, we're running, we're running out of time. We're running out of time. But, you know, let me, if I want to, I, if you give me quickly. a minute to react to. No, no reaction. Just one second. In fact, it happened about two seconds, please. Just, just go ahead. Just okay. Briefly. I, I was in this place, 2015, when we were discussing the insecurity in the country. And the PDP was bad. And the APC should come in. If you remember, the, the, the minority parties, you know, came together to form PDP, purposely to remove PDP. To form APC. To form the form APCs, and their intention was to remove APC. We are here. We're discussing with you. PDP. To remove PDP. To remove PDP. You understand? Now we are saying the same thing now. The, the the new parties they want to unite they want to unite and remove APC. APC. Okay, I'm the new party Nigeria. <laughs> Nigeria. Okay, okay. 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 move this to joint unite. Okay, gentlemen. Okay, let's move it like that. If we we'll repeat next election, let me be that. Let me be that. Let me be that. No, no, no. Some let me be that. We are we are wrapping this up now. But the focus of our conversation has not been on inter-party rivalry. We're actually talking about the political the parties. The party, yeah. Yes, organizing themselves. That is the key thing. When we want to talk about remove this one, don't remove this one, let this one stay, they, two of, they will be here. It will be crossfire amongst you mm -hmm. so that you will say, no, 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 you can't remove me because this is what we have done. Each of the parties, they have their own scorecards, I believe. All, all, all right, gentlemen, yes. let, let, let's yeah. go today here. You know, um, uh, I'll leave the rest for another, another day. We said we're going to have opportunity for discussing this uh, before the... Uh, campaigns uh, begin. And on that note, I'd like to thank Ambassador Azikude, National Chairman of uh, National Rescue Movement, NRM. Uh, thank thank you, you very much. For yeah. coming. Um, Chief Raf OK, most National Chairman, African Democratic uh, Congress. Good to have you. Good, good to have had you today on the show. I hope you're going to have a presidential candidate before the election. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, right. we, are, we, are, we, are, we are working on it. We are working on that, yes. It's a new culture. It's part of the it's part of the culture of leadership. It's quite okay. a new culture. Ali Aldu, leader APC Rebirth. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you this morning. Thank you. Um, we are yet to see the uh, 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 PKC. Uh, efficacious nature of this rebate. And we remain the most organized party as we are. Oh, oh, all right, thank you. And uh, let us <laughs> uh, appreciate Honorable Ademu Mohammed, former Majority Leader, Kogi State House of Assembly. Thank you for It's being a pleasure. Here. Thank you so very much. All right, Kia, we're taking a short break. I was, yeah. I was sc sc scrambling in my head to recall the, uh, about Einstein. Uh, formula E equals to MC uh, square. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's the critical formula. So for politics, it's success minus successor well, equals to well, failure. I'm happy, man, but I'm just saying, I'm not uh, science inclined. You just oh, managed oh, manage oh, to like get the. Who said? Who said? You remember the MIT formula in mathematics and algebra? It's algebra. What are you talking about? Uh, that's for that much. <laughs> if you did much for that thesis, you will not. All right. We're taking a short break. <laughs> We're taking a short break. We so that there is no real deal between Kiran and I. Uh, uh, and we have the political <laughs> party. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll take a short break now. When we return, of course, we'll be taking on St. Matthew's Royal Academy. Uh -uh. Oh boy, this one where I read. You carry machete, you see carry gun. What do you want to take and do, sir? After the paralysis, I don't vex. I don't